to find out the students union of this university at the outset uh, i thank all of you to have invited me here now the topic for this evening discussion is the other india possibilities and really existing democracy now are there two indias are there three indias are there four indias we need to count now what is the situation of democracy how do different sections of people in this country engage with this existing democracy today whether what exists today is democracy at all now those of you who looked at my latest book called post in the india i dedicated this book to five great prophets first buddha jesus mahmud marx and abed i made marx a prophet in this book in, in, in this dedication i didn't explain why i call marx a prophet too but in this dedication you don't find brahma you don't find vishnu you don't find shiva now do you find rama now do you find krishna now why i respect buddha why i respect mahama why i respect jesus why i respect marx why i respect ambedkar and why not the hindu gods one of the reasons why i i cannot respect them is that all of them have weapons in their hands you just look at you go to any temple see vishnu in front of the temple vishnu sleeps on snakes and has a chakram in his hands it's a bee that's not ashoka's wheel that ashoka's wheel is a wheel of a uh, bullock cart and transport which became part of the democratic structure that ambedkar wanted in this country but the wheel that vishnu wields is a wheel of weapon and what stunningly strikes one is that lakh his wife lakshmi sits there keeps pressing his feet he is so tired even to sleep on snakes and the wife needs to press his feet and the present democracy is headed by him that's the problem if a democracy is headed by vishnu with a chakra in hand sleeping on the snakes and the wife is pressing the feet what will happen to the people who are these people who are and who why did he wield the chakra and you look at the rama that uh, bjp brought in during the post mandal period the rama was just as if he was coming from the gym with a fully muscled body and has will and bow and arrows in his hands again as who was he doing that did rama came out with his muscled body again as christians when he was alive i don't know whether he was alive but did he come out against muslims at that time or did he come again is the adivasis they were there in this time the adivasis again is whom rama came out with his muscled body with his bow and arrows and 
with a desire of killing people, even if somebody touches the other, that Adivasis existed in Afghanistan, Adivasis existed in Pakistan, Adivasis existed in Bangladesh, and Adivasis existed full of them in Kashmir. There were no Muslims in Kashmir at that time. Please look back at the history. And Adivasis existed all over India. Then there were Chandals. There were Shudras. The Adivasis and Chandals were not born in Hindu God's body. Please, as students, go to Rukveda. Rukveda says that Hindu God Brahma created human beings. And this God was not talking about human beings who exist in Africa or human beings who exist in China or human beings who exist in Europe, but human beings who existed in Indian subcontinent. How, how was the God? The Brahmins were born from his head. The Kshatriyas from his shoulders. The Vaishyas from his feet. And the Sudras, Vaishyas from his thighs, the Sudras from his feet. I am a feet boy. And Rama was coming against me. If I try to go towards the head, I don't have, I don't have the right to go towards the head. Learn Sanskrit, talk to Hindu God. So Hindu gods have weapons against Adivasis, Chandals and Sudras. Therefore, I cannot dedicate anything to them and I have to fight them consistently till they die. And how do they die? First of all, they have to put their weapons down. I have to see that they, they put their weapons down. And how do I do it? This is where the question of the relationship between the Adivasis and the Dalits, backward classes with minorities comes. And what is this democracy? This democracy has nothing to do with us today. It has nothing to do with Adivasis. It has nothing to do with Dalits. It has nothing to do with minorities and it has nothing to do with various sections. Now what is the problem? The Adivasis historically who existed in this country gave all food culture of this country. You know, in, in post in India I said Adivasis are unpaid teachers. They were the ones who gave all the food culture that we have. What? roots to be eaten, what fruits to be eaten, what birds to be eaten, what animals to be eaten, and all the beef that Brahmins ate in ancient India, they were taught by Adivasis. And the Birakaya, Bendakaya they are eating today were taught by Adivasis themselves. They don't discover. But they have not been paid back anything. The Dalits are subaltern scientists, productive soldiers. The Shudras are meat and milk economists and unknown engineers. But the Hindu gods held weapons in their hands against us from the day Aryans landed in this country till today. And this is where the Adivasis, untouchables and Shudras walked into Islam in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh and today they have walked into Islam in Kashmir. So, three independent nations from the very same once upon a time Hindu, the, the Aryan, then Buddhist for almost thousand years, and then later Hindu, and today they became Islamic nations. And they are talking about that there is violence in these parts. It is not just Indians. Including Obama who came the other day believes that the real problem of 
of democracy lies between the Islamic world on one side, and particularly that exists in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the Western demands. But the question that they don't understand is the, 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 the fight of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh vis-a-vis -vis the West, or the fight of the Muslims and some of those who have the state power in the West has something to do with the Dalit Adivasi Sudra question within India. They became Muslims because Hinduism did not give even the right to touch. Now, I had an engaged debate with the civil liberties and I was part of it. I came out of it and is fighting still. If you don't recognize the right to touch, the right to religion, you know, one day when I wrote Why I'm Not a Hindu, an RSS guy called me with all the abuses. And he was abusing them for, why bloody you wrote this bloody book? What do you want in this country? You are already a professor in this university. I said, you ask me, what, what do I want? And I said, I, I want to become the head priest of Tirupati, then I resign as professor. <laughs> then he said, you want to become head priest of professor Tirupati? Do you know Sanskrit? I said, does Hindu God understand only Sanskrit? Then he is not intelligent God. He is a fool. So then you first of all, let me become head priest of Tirupati. Then I, I, I speak to, that is between me and Bankana, what to do? Which language to talk to? I teach him English. Now they say, we can't learn English. We, we can't learn Sanskrit and we can't become priests. The right to religion was not there. And the right to touch the book. A revolutionary in Kerala the other day became a priest in Ayapa temple. But he was a brother. A revolutionary can go from one end to another. He could be a revolutionary and if he doesn't want that, he can be a teacher or if he doesn't want it, he can be a priest of Dirpati also. But Kanchayalaya cannot become. Because I am a soldier. Therefore, the masses went into Islam because the notion of Allah gave them the notion of equality. God created all human beings equal in the image of God. And the notion of Mazi gave them the right to equality. And my friend was talking about Nizam. You just go to Usman Ali Khan's photo in our in library of Usman Ali University. He exactly looks like me. <laughs> Black, short, that means he was a Dalit who became Muslim. He was not a Patan. So, and he became a king. Now that is the reason why it is wrong to write a song on Nizam instead of writing a, it was on Landlord. But the question today is, what should scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, backward classes and minorities do? What is the democracy that we have today? What kind of change we need? This is where we need to examine the ideological formations of a new democratic process that needs to be established in this country even though by using the same constitution for a different purpose. Number one, Mahatma Gandhi, who represents, but there was Gautam Buddha before. The Brahmins in ancient India said there was the slogan Brahman Hitaya Brahman Sukhaya. Gautam Buddha came and said Bahujan Hitaya Bahujan Sukhaya. And it was Mahatma Pule who said Bahujan said to unite and fight against the Dashavataras, the gods who came in the form of fish, tartars, lion, whatever forms they came, they, they killed in that form. Now Mahatma Pule and there is this Ambedkar who came as a new prophet who wants to establish humanity in this country and then he walked into Buddhism. Then you have to carefully look at Maulana Azad Establish humanity in this country 
and then he walked into Buddhism. Then you have to carefully look at Maulana Azad Khan. In the Islamic, in the, in the, in the Indian independent debate, there was Iqbal who formulated the two nation theory and much before that there was Sir Sayyid Ahmad. Iqbal and Jinnah were for Pakistan formation of a separate state. Ambedkar worked his own theory on that. And Maulana Azad was for United India. Now what shocked me when I read Maulana Azad was that there is a very fundamental issue that he raised. He was the president of Indian National Congress. He was the first Muslim to join Congress and he was suspected. In Calcutta, because the British were recruiting Muslim officials to control the Hindu people and therefore his own entry into Congress was suspected by Hindus. Did British send him as an agent? Okay, that part is over. But later, Maulana Azhar, after he served as the President of Indian National Congress for two terms, he named Nehru as the next successor. And that was then failed cabinet mission. Maulana Azhar later tells, I have committed greatest mistake by naming Nehru as my successor. Why? He says, the cabinet mission approved my proposal of keeping United India with provinces as total autonomous provinces where the Muslim majority was there, the Muslim state would be born, and Muslim rulers would exist in the democratic form. But Nehru and Patel opposed that proposal and said that we will not accept the Maulana Azhar's proposal. And that is where Jinnah declared, you know, the two nation formation and their own Pakistan question. Then he gives two examples. How communalism operated in Congress. In the first election, 1937 election, when the Congress won the election, in Bengal, there was a Nariman who was the most popular Congress leader who should have become the chief minister. And he was, he was a past. Sardar Vallabhai Patel absolutely manipulated in a Hindu fundamentalist manner and threw him out and he made a Brahmin as the chief minister. And in, in, in Bihar, a Muslim was supposed to be the chief minister candidate who was most popular, Sayyid Khan. But Rajendra Prasad manipulated in favor of one Narayana, uh, the first chief minister, a Brahmin, and then did not allow him to become. He says, absolute communal politics were operating within the Khan. And that is where the whole problem of, you know, justification of Pakistan came. Therefore, today, I have a feeling to fight the question of SCST, the, 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 the Brahminic democracy that exists. There is a fundamental need for unification of SCST OBC minorities based on certain thought. The thought of Kulik, the thought of Ambedkar, and the thought of Maulana Nazar. Even the Kashmir question has to be dealt within the larger context of this total discrimination and violence that is being used by the present state, what I call Kautilian state. This state is Kautilian, it uses violence, and its spiritual realm is violent, its political realm is violent, its military realm is violent. Therefore, all kinds of uh, you know mutilation is taking place. So friends, as young students, my appeal to you is, the only way to save the people here. Now what kind of nations will come in? How, what, what happens to each region is a different question. The people have a right to choose. But the question is, Hinduism is spiritual classes. It is, it, a Muslim is not saying that, but we who experience its spiritual classes structure with the weaponized gods and say this. Whereas Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Sikhism are spiritual democracies. 
who believe that God created all human beings equal. Whether we believe in religion or not is a different question. But if you believe in Hinduism, you are violent. You are worshipping violence. You, even you may be a vegetarian, but you worship violence. That's called vegetarian violence. Stop this. This this rubbish theory of peaceful, non-violent, you know, vegetarian Brahmanism is absolutely wrong, and they worship violence. If you see anywhere in the world human beings worshiping gods who have weapons in their hands, no, only in this country. Therefore, this nation also became violent to root out the violence. You search for the alternative in Buddha. Buddha said, if Brahmanism was using violence as a creed, in each yajna and yaga, one lakh fifty thousand cattle were killed, and one head priest was eating eight brains of eight bulls. That was the Brahman capacity. Eight brains. I was I I could not get one brain of one bull, and that was their violence. There was the absolute non-violent Jains who were thinking that inhaling insect will also kill a, 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 this thing. And the Buddha came and said, "Middle path, Madhya Marg." So using violence as creed is wrong, and using violence as need is necessary. Therefore, the people who fight for their rights uh, should not use violence as creed. They can use violence as need, and that is what Ambedkar's ideology is. That is what Mahatma Gandhi's ideology is. That is what even the, the, the democratic structure all over the world, and even in the realm of socialism, that is what alone can work. And I believe strongly that that is alone that alone can win the battle in this country and defeat the violent state formations and. The so-called democratic structures that really violate even the constitution. Thank you very much.